Fort Leeb's tastes good like a beer should. You said it. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. <laughs> Try a frosty cold glass of Bavarian right away. What's that you say? No boulder dash or baloney in here. Cheers, everyone, and welcome to the Unfiltered Gentlemen. No matter how you take your hooch, we've got something ice cold and on tap. Now, serving it to you straight and unfiltered, here are Craig, Scott, and Dan. Yes, indeed. Yes. Hello, everybody. Welcome into the Unfiltered Gentlemen. Thanks for joining. Thanks for listening. Thanks for spreading the word about our fancy little show over here. I am Greg, or that's Scott. Oh, yeah. And that is Dan. What up? And uh, we are serving it to you. Uh... Shout out to uh, Los Angeles. Whoa. Thanks, everybody. Oh, yeah. Thanks, uh, local people. Yes. It's nice little shot down the 101 freeway. Oh, nice. You know the runway where they land airplanes? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the oh, 101. The crash oh, airplanes? Yeah. <laughs> We're still on that. Yeah. It's yeah. been a few weeks. we got to work on it. Yeah. Uh, so thank you guys for listening. Los Angeles, the number one listenership for last wow, week. Wow, Los Angeles. I know. Coming back <laughs> around. No more Mexico City. Oops. I know. I know. They, they heard our accent. They'll be back. Wow. <laughs> yeah. K-Pasta. I know. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and our bird word of the week is Sour House. Okay. Sour House. Speaking of Spanish, we'll get to that in there just you. a second. Don't forget to hashtag show us your beers and uh, rate and subscribe on Apple Podcasts and iTunes and everything else you listen to. And uh, you got some nice can art. We love nice cans. Hell yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Hashtag cans for cans. We want to see them. Uh, all right. Speaking of cans, I think we've got uh, some really nice cans over here that we need to get right into. So let's get into our beer of the week. Grab your libations, pals. It's time for Beer of the Week. And if you're drinking well, you know that you're my friend. And I'll say, I think I'll have myself a beer. Yes, we will. By the way, great can art. This is cans for I cans love right it. here. Yeah, this is looking good. Uh, we are drinking Casa Agria's Oxnard Pale Ale. Casa Agria, of course, Sour House. For those of you that we're not drinking their sour, no, uh, no. <laughs> I know I had to make sure about that. You're like, oh shit! Yeah, it said uh, beer of the week, Casa Agria. I was like, uh oh, had to go in with the the nose first and smell <laughs> it, make sure it wasn't too sour. Dip those toes in before you jump full, yeah. full force. Yeah, it's there, good yeah. stuff, man. It is. Yes, so this is Oxnard Pale Ale. It's six percent. It has a four point one five on Untapped and not on Beer Advocate uh, from Casa Agria. It says. Oxnard is a hazy pale ale brewed to celebrate the place our brewery calls home. The aroma bursts with a hop blend that includes some old school hops, some new school hops, hops from where you'd expect, and some from where you wouldn't. Just like our Oxnard family. Oh, yeah. Yeah, finally, Oxnard turned out something yeah. good. Besides Dan, of course. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, this is amazing. Good stuff, it's man. Good, yeah. I gotta say, it's already gone. It's like too easy to drink at I'm this not point. surprised. <laughs> <laughs> and Oxnard is hazy. That's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it goes right with it. So it makes sense. Yeah, this is delicious. A lot of a lot of fruits, uh, like tropical fruits, on the tongue there. Real juicy. Yeah, mm, my tongue is is watering as I describe it. That's a really good hazy. Yeah, this is this is a nice hazy. It's not one of those like chunky East Coast hazy. No. no, these are ha- how hazies are supposed to. Yeah. to taste. This is uh, delicious. Good stuff. It's yeah. like a lot of different flavors just jumping out right right at you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Way to go, Oxnard. Yeah, way to yeah. go. <laughs> uh, yeah, we I talked a week or two back about going. To Kasaga, and this is one of my souvenirs I brought back with the Oxnard. Oh, nice. right on. Yeah. I, was, I did some damage to the keg they had on tap. <laughs> oh. I'm going to have to go back and check that out, man. Like I said, I've been uh, every time I go, I'm like, well, I might as well get to the sours, and then I always regret it because like, I'm not, I'm just not a sour person. So. Right. I mean, you're a sour person, but not a sour person. <laughs> yeah, sour yeah. Beer. yeah, exactly. So, yeah, man, their other beers are great. They're, some of their sours, and I, I like sours, but some of their sours are just too much for me. Yeah. Uh, the lady friend likes them because she really digs the Ooh. sour stuff, but... Um, not me. Not not that sour. Yeah. In fact, on Beer Harmony right now, we have a very sour beer that we did. Whew, it's too much. <laughs> it was not Casa Agria. But uh, yeah, Casa Agria's hoppy stuff is really good, too. I, I highly recommend it. Mm, okay. Uh, all right. We got uh, some beer science to get to later Ooh. on the show. Yeah. It's been a while. Yes, it has. Uh, so Crotch Talk, Dan coming in with a movie review. Yeah. Oh, it's been oh, a minute. Man. Yeah. It has been a minute. Uh, some sports. We have another Integrin Oktoberfest drunk story excuse me sweet and uh, some booze news of course and many other things so uh, let's dive right in have a grievance to share it's time for a crotch talk it is indeed uh not a whole lot of grievances thanksgiving was a few days ago yes it was um i got nice and hammered <laughs> you know i usually don't get crazy so, drunk on thanksgiving so I, yeah. yeah 
Like a lot of times I'll I'll have a few drinks, especially as I'm cooking, and then uh, you know one or two with the the meal and all that stuff, and then kind of back off, maybe take a nap or something. This year. I, I got into dinner and I had that point where I was like, I could either keep drinking and sleep here or stop now and be able to drive later. Nah. <laughs> I didn't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. There you go. Yeah. You know, a lot of times like I'll go to uh, the old man's house mm. towards the end of Thanksgiving. We'll hang out and have some more beers. Mm-hmm. There was no driving this time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I was waiting for you <laughs> during, uh-huh. during my sleeping. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you were very coherent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> waiting on bated breath. <laughs> yeah. I was past that waiting for you to come in. <laughs> passed Kicking. out in front of the door. <laughs> Can't even open it. <laughs> the hell's going on here? Uh, yeah, man, I got real wine drunk, which means I, w- I woke up the next morning with a nice headache. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Good for you. Mm-hmm. I had work the next day. So. Oh, you had to work on Friday? Yeah. Oh, wow. Bunch of crap. Oh. Is that normal or do you have to make up for stuff? I mean, we usually do like skeleton crew on Friday. Uh-huh. It's not, you know, after Thanksgiving, so it's like half and half. Okay. And I guess, you know, you flip the coin and I had to go this time. So Dang. Bunch of crap. Yeah. Yeah. The lady friend usually has to work and Is that right? <laughs> like day or two before. Yeah, it was the day before Thanksgiving, they go, We're gonna give you Friday off. <laughs> and like they they rotate like some people got that friday off and some people are getting the day before christmas off and some people are getting the day before new year's off Mm -hmm. so like a third a third a third she's like oh awesome so two days before i get the day off you're now telling me (laughs) i know right no time to plan anything (laughs) and i'm not getting the day before christmas or new year's off right well this is fantastic thank you so much (laughs) yeah (laughs) Yeah, so um but everybody have good thanksgiving eat eat a lot yeah good stuff yeah I think so, yeah. Drink a lot? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's that stuff in Turkey that makes you sleepy? Uh, tryptophan? There you go. Yeah. I was trying to figure that out all I tripped weekend. over the fan. <laughs> yeah, right. There we yeah. go. <laughs> yeah, I just, for me, it's booze. I just drink enough yeah, to like, just... take a nap. Ah, yeah. The combo between tryptophan and booze. Yeah. Can you imagine? And oh. the lion's playing. Oh yeah. my dude, that was <laughs> horrible football on Thanksgiving. Yeah. It was Detroit all crypto fans. It was all bad. <laughs> <laughs> it was all bad. Why do they keep putting the Lions on Thanksgiving? I don't know. Who, nobody's a Lions fan. Man, Cowboys. Yeah. It's Cowboys awful. and Lions. It's a it's a it's a lifetime thing. Like, tradition. Like, like a new one yeah. now, I think, is the Falcons. It seems like every year the Falcons have been playing too. And, okay. Yeah, they really wet the bed. Yeah. <laughs> it was terrible. Yeah. After that coming off that Monday game. With the the Chiefs and the Rams, oh, yeah. to go yeah, straight into that. those, oh my god, those just Good Lord. shit shows of games on Thursday. <laughs> was Monday awful. night was like one of the best games in the history of football. And yeah, then you go to Thursday where it's like we don't need Turkey to sleep. We got this. Yeah, we yeah. got the Lions doing it for us. Thanks. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, which I did. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So thanks Time football. Yeah. Between the Lions and alcohol. Yeah. Way to yeah. let us down. Yeah. Once again, way to, we to let down America. I, yeah. I could have had company. Would have never known it. Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Probably did have company. <laughs> uh, maybe I did. Yeah. Thanks for coming over, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, so that was that. And also, I uh, just wanted to mention, we put out some drink local t-shirts. Uh, there's no branding, no unfiltered gentleman branding of any sorts on them. It's just drink local. It's got the California bear and some California stuff on there. A hundred percent of the profits from those are going to uh, charities that at uh, effect or that helped the victims and firefighters of the California fighters fires. Wow. Speaking is hard, uh, both Northern and Southern. And a lot of people have gotten on there. We've wa- raised over a hundred dollars at this point, which is awesome. Uh, nice. keep, uh, buying some shirts. They're great Christmas presents. And, uh, you can find that on all our social media as we've been posting it like crazy. Um, just a cool design. I got a lot of good feedback on that. So thank you. So, so keep buying them and, uh, you know, does a nice thing and they're, they're good Christmas presents. Hey, yes. Or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or Festivus or whatever. It's a nice shirt. Yeah. So uh, thank you. All right. Let's uh, let's move things on a little bit. Have you seen the latest moving picture? Let's talk movies for guys. In case the lions hadn't pissed them off enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, over the weekend I had watched uh, Creed 2, which is obviously the sequel to Creed, oh, which right. uh, falls into the whole uh, Rocky uh universe thing going yeah. on there what's more confusing to follow at this point rocky or star wars <laughs> i would say star wars <laughs> okay still. pretty yeah. cool i guess after rocky 15 you gotta yeah. start going with something yeah, yeah. but that, one and two. on top of that like they never came up with like seed of rocky which would make it rocky one moving rocky one to rocky two yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah. star wars did those bastards they are assholes yeah 
So Seed of Rocky, which by the way is a porn, but sounds like it. Yeah, <laughs> Seed of Rocky. Yeah. Oh jeez. Anyways, uh, so yeah, Creed. From uh, what I heard, <laughs> Creed Two is the sequel to uh, uh, the movie Creed, and it is uh, Cre- the the character Adonis Creed is he's the the bastard son of uh, Apollo Creed. Basically, <laughs> okay. yeah, he was, Rocky and Creed had a son. He, right. well, he was born out of wedlock. Oh man, and um, they couldn't get married back in the eighties. <laughs> yeah, so this movie basically takes uh, if you don't know the history in Rocky Four. Well, we've had this conversation about Rocky movies, but in Rocky Four. Uh, Apollo Creed, who fights uh, you know, longtime nemesis of uh, Rocky, they end up kind of being friends in Rocky right. Three. In Rocky Four, he goes on to fight uh, Ivan Drago, who's uh, the big Russian dude. Okay, and uh, he literally dies in the ring. <laughs> he gets his ass kicked so bad. If he dies, he dies. Yes, and he broke him. <laughs> so uh, he kills Apollo Creed, right? So we all know that's how Apollo Creed's story arc ends in the Rocky series is he dies in Rocky IV. He dies to the Russian. And uh, Rocky has to go over to Russia to go beat him up for him. He's uh, an Avenger's death. Right. Yeah. So in Creed II, um Ivan Drago has a kid named oh, Victor boy. Drago. Oh, no. Yeah. So obviously, like, genetics say that he wants to kill Adonis Creed. Well, I don't know that that's really what he wants to do. Yeah. (laughs) Anyways, he wants to fight him because he's the champ. And, uh, you know, uh, I I watched this movie. It's getting a lot of uh, good, like, reviews. Mm -hmm. And everyone says it's fantastic. It's outstanding. I'm not one of those people. Uh (laughs) And I don't mean to be an asshat or anything. But, like, I kind of felt like if you've watched all the Rocky movies, you're going to say, obviously, like, you're going to like it. To me, I've seen all of them, and I really feel like it was a rehash of Rocky Three. Oh, wow. Yeah, where um, it, it was a little predictable in what mm-hmm. happens. And mm-hmm. I don't know. If you've seen Rocky Three, I feel like I already spoiled it for you. Um, <laughs> spoiler alert. Yeah, spoiler everybody. alert. It's just like it. Um, but I don't know. Th- there was some things that, you know, yeah, to me, it was very predictable. I didn't feel like. Do you, you mean know, Rocky Four? What's that? Did no, no. It was just like Rocky Three. Three? You, I thought it was going to be like Rocky Four. But it is actually just like Rocky Three, where in Rocky Three, uh, Clubber Lang beats okay. up Rocky. I, I'm a Rocky nerd. So. <laughs> no, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, no. It, and Clubber Lang beats up Rocky the right. first time, like half hour into the movie. So you know Rocky isn't going to beat him in the yeah, first half yeah. hour. And then he then he goes on. He has to train with Carl Weathers. And oh, like, okay. Yeah, and then he goes back and he beats up Mr. T, Clubber Lang. So that's kind of what happens in this movie. It's kind of the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you know, I, I mean, they, I, there's some good things about it, I guess. I like the fighting. Obviously, it was really cool. The training, obviously, is really cool. Um, I don't know. I kind of feel like uh, I, I never was never a fan of his lady friend in this movie. Um, so they kind of force her singing down your throat a lot in this movie. Oh. Yeah, and they're always talking about like, oh, she's so, got such a great voice. I don't share those sentiments. <laughs> I don't think she's that good. <laughs> and um, uh, better than me, I guess, right? But I don't know. I, I And then- uh, That bar's not set real high. I mean, yeah, <laughs> come on. Yeah. Yeah, so um, it, I, it's a, it's a, it's Rocky Three. <laughs> okay. I, I like Rocky Three better. Yeah. Same story, different yeah. people. I mean, Same I, thing. I was such a Rocky nerd. I, I went as far as- I, what was the last one where he would? And I mean, I went through five, and then they years later they had. I think it was Balboa. Oh yeah, correct. He, Rocky. Balboa. He was old and and fought. Yeah, after Rocky five, he fought uh, Mason Dixon or whatever the guy. Yeah, was. Antonio Tarver. And then after that, I'm like, okay, I'm done. That's You're done. I, that's enough. Yeah, you pretty much are done. Like I feel yeah. like they're just rehashing I, I, all of them. I can die any second now. I don't want to watch any more Rocky movies. So. <laughs> yeah, you really can't. It's yeah, we're on the purge. I'm there. I'm yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine Creed three, if they ever make one, would probably be a little original. Like, I mean, I don't know how many times you could keep rehashing the Rocky yeah, movies. I don't know. I don't. I can't imagine that they would want to rehash Rocky five because it was awful, and he's not that old yet to start training somebody else. So, but uh, <laughs> you, you can go to Rambo fifteen and keep it going. I guess <laughs> it's true. I don't know. Yeah. It's true. But I don't know. I, if I had to put a star thing on this, I would probably give it like six stars. There you go. Did you drink uh, long to get through? I try to get through it, I okay. think. For me, it was yeah. that way. I mean, some people would probably dig it, but I was not one of those people. Watching sober wasn't going to happen. No. no that's fair. Mm-hmm. Uh, if uh, somebody wanted to go watch a good Rocky movie, what's your favorite of the series? I still, I, I do like Rocky Three. oddly enough. No, just yeah. the first time you saw yeah, it. Yeah, maybe that's why. With, with Clubber? Yeah, that's one of my yeah. favorites. Obviously, the first one is the best one, right, but once you best, move on from that one, past one, yeah, like after one, I like three with uh, Mr. I, T. I, I gotta agree with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
That was I, a good I haven't one. seen any of them, so. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, so so see part one and then jump right to three. Okay. And then skip, <laughs> skip Creed 2. <laughs> I still need to watch Wolf Cop. Oh, I know. Oh, man. Yeah, I'll know. watch that again. <laughs> we really do need to have like a Wolf Cop screaming. Yes. Screening. Or screaming. E- either Both. one. Either one. Yeah, it's all the same. Uh, all right. Well, very cool. So uh, don't waste your move- money on going to the movie theater on that one. <laughs> yeah. Watch Rocky 3. Watch Rocky 3 instead. It's way cheaper. <laughs> Just get a big screen. Uh, old time you were the week. Stagecoach tilter. Ooh. That oh person's boy. a stagecoach tilter. A drunk guy. Uh, apparently, he means a large obese person. Oh. <laughs> so I've never heard this before, but in my research, I guess uh, stagecoaches had like really uh, loose leaf springs to kind of like, you know, so, uh, make the ride not oh, so bumpy yeah. as they're going over all these dirt roads and shit. And uh, when fat people would get on the side as they're crawling in, it would like tilt it over <laughs> oh, to dang. almost, you know, on its side. And so a stagecoach tilter was a really fat person who <laughs> would <laughs> tilt the stagecoach. Oh, man. Like one of my exes, yeah. Oh, geez. Oh. <laughs> Just one. Uh, <laughs> so, so or I, two, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, l- I lose track. Right. So I thought that was funny. Uh, all right. Not a stagecoach tilter. Oh, no. No one could blame you for bed swerving. It's time for Beer Babe of the Week. It is indeed, and you can find her on the Instagrams at, no spaces, no dots, no dash. All right. Uh, at Manic Pixie Beer Girl. I'm on it. Manic Pixie Beer Girl. <laughs> uh, and this one, she's at a beer festival drinking uh, some of the local tasty goods that they got on tap there. Duluth Festival. Interesting. I love beer festivals, man. I, it's the worst part about winter. No beer festivals. Oh, I know. Ooh. It's too cold, man. Yeah. Or they bring them indoors or something. Anyways, got distracted. Manic Pixie <laughs> Beer Girl on the Instagrams. Do yourselves a favor and go give her a follow. All right, let's move on to some sports. Yeah. And now, the sports. Brought to you by cleaninguptheglass.com. Whether it's the Baltimore Chop... For the one-two punch, it's time for sports. And Mr. CleanUpTheGlass.com has a new CleanUpTheGlass.com article. Oh, yeah, correct. I was reading it today. Oh, did you? Yeah, it, it's some of my favorite uh, on-the-crapper reading. Oh, thank you. Yes. appreciate that. I mean that in like the nicest way possible. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> That's where I read most of my stuff, too. So. Yeah. <laughs> where else are you going to read it? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I need some privacy. Some exactly. Quiet. Exactly. Yeah. So mine, uh, this one's called uh, Think Big. Basically, it's a critique of the Luke Walton's uh, uh, rotations with the Lakers this year. Oh. Um, they, my biggest thing is they keep playing this uh, small ball thing with the that the Warriors oh, are doing. Oh, okay, yeah, you know what that. I mean. And yeah, they're yeah, trying yeah. to do like LeBron at center, and it's just not the same thing, dude. And uh, even yeah. with the addition of Tyson Chandler, which has shorn up the thing, you know, the lineups. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like the last game against the Magic, like. There, there was a, a time in the game where there was no Tyson Chandler or JaVel McGee. Like, he's stubbornly trying to do it again. Yeah. Right. And it's just, dude, that's not the kind of players you have on the – you don't have the Warriors. You have LeBron with the Lakers. You have to figure this out. And this is kind of my answer to that. Yeah, you got to you gotta have five sharpshooters on the floor if you're going to go small. Exactly. And he doesn't. No. And uh, nobody has a good big man right now. Exactly. So why not go with your big man? And the thing that I found most uh, surprising when I was reading the article was how – little they've actually done it on the Warriors this year. It was like 14 minutes total. Yeah, at the, the time. I'm yeah, sure at the it's time of be, writing. But well, uh, who knows? It's probably the same because Curry's dead. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's injured. true. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I didn't think about that. Yeah, so uh, I didn't realize how little they did. It's so often talked about, like, oh, the, the death the lineup. Or yeah, whatever, the death small, lineup. Yeah. Small ball and this and that. But they've only mm-hmm. done it for 14 minutes, mm-hmm. where I'm sure Walton does it like 14 minutes a game. <laughs> I know. It seems like <laughs> it. Feels like it. Every minute's an hour. I yeah. swear. It's like, get him off the floor. I don't like this. Yeah, what's going on here? Uh-huh. So, uh, yeah, good article. And I agree with uh, just about everything you had to say. Thank you. Especially the Magic Johnson stuff. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. He was the man. Mm-hmm. He was. He was, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of LeBron and the Lakers. Yep. Uh-oh. The NBA on TNT ratings are down. Oh, no. 26% this year. Whoa. And they're blaming that heavily on LeBron's move to LA. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, because yeah. he sucks now. I mean, the team he's on sucks. People aren't watching. Well, I, I thought it had to do with uh, that they're playing on the West Coast now, and all the East Coast people have to stay up till ten thirty to watch them now, and they're like, ah, oh, fuck that. There's that, yeah. and there's the fact that like the best teams in the league have no markets, 
Like Toronto has the best record. They don't even get Nielsen ratings up there. Yeah. Um, who else is doing good? Like Indiana's doing good. Do you know who the right? number one team in the West is? It was Memphis. Oh, it's the goddamn Clippers. It is the Clippers. Oh, it's uh, a, and, and that's, that's why they're rid of me. Oh, and look what <laughs> happens. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I kind of feel like number one, it'll all balance out, and uh, number two, like. I think they just the rules got fucked up with so much that it's yeah. like all these weird teams now are like leading the way and it's like what the fuck like you can't play defense anymore yeah. like they have that which that, they don't yeah there they, is no defense they never did to begin with but now in they have any that, sport they have that imp- like impeding the progress of the offensive yeah. player so you can't even like get in their face anymore like yeah. Yeah, it's so dumb. Yeah, you just have to let them go by. And it's like, oh, they're going to the hole. Like, what, what can I do here? Yeah, they're setting up rules to get rid of defense. It's, yeah. It's, it's awful. It's all either shoot a three-pointer or slam dunk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nothing That's else. That's all it is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think the first week there was like two 50-point scorers, and one of them was Derrick Rose. So, like, I don't know. It's like, <laughs> I think they got to rethink got traded. this. Yeah. <laughs> They got to rethink this thing, man. I don't yeah. know. But you're right. Maybe, you know, the the move I think has to do with it too. Yeah. Yeah, there's not a a big star on the East Coast right now. Mm-hmm. Even though the teams are doing well. There's not a yeah. big star on the East Coast and the Times. Mm-hmm. Um and a lot of Lakers fans are pissed that LeBron came to LA, so there's <laughs> that going on. And the Lakers suck and I for one am not heavily watching the Lakers. No. I have not watched one full game this season. I just have no need. I've watched a little here, a little fourth quarter oh, okay. there or there. I'm but. Not, you know what? And I'm not a big LeBron fan, but I don't understand the bitterness. Because if you look at the Lakers' history, that's what they've done. I mean, look at I mean Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't a Laker to be. He, they traded for him. Right. They traded for Will Chamberlain. I mean, they traded for Shaquille, but now all of a sudden they traded for LeBron, and everybody hates him. And well, that, that was I another, mean, because, that was I, another post I wrote actually. I know LeBron's a bitch. Yes. Which I don't think. <laughs> he's in my opinion. He's very easy to hate. In my opinion, the, like the previous players that I named were not such bitches. But right. Right. And but, except for Shaq I mean, once he went to the Celtics. <laughs> yeah. Oh god, yeah. That was bitch made. Yeah. I mean, I'm starting to, you know, enjoy LeBron being on the Lakers, but I'm not like totally sold on him. But correct. Like I like uh, when he goes to the line, I really miss that Kobe Bryant eighty five percent shooter right? but, that yeah. went up when he was in the clutch. You yeah. know, people are saying like, Oh, he's not a clutch player. Yeah, I mean he shoots seventy percent, so obviously he's gonna miss and he's like, No, no, no. You don't get it. When it's clutch time, you shoot better. Yeah. And then, like, he shoots worse. Yeah, he so does. So it's like, yeah. you know, it's funny. Like, with, with Kobe, when he went to the line, it was like, he's going to make it. Right. He's going to make it. And everyone's like, well, how do you know? He's it, like, yeah. he's going to make it. And it was when, funny. The, when the, M- was on the, line, the yeah. MVP chance would even die down. The crowd was like scared. It's like, keep going. He doesn't care. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't give a he shit. He hits it in Utah with people screaming at him. He doesn't care about yeah. MVP. But with LeBron, like, I know he's going to miss them all. Like, yeah. I feel like, please make one. Please make yeah, one. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does do that. Yeah. I guess to, what I'm trying to say is they've always, like, traded for a star player and then tried to build around him and then, you know, continue, you know, like, bringing in rookies or whatever mm-hmm. to continue. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of thinking that's kind of what they're trying to do with LeBron because, to me, he's, like, towards the end of his career. Yeah. But, uh, and, uh, I don't know, maybe it's the new management, but... The fans aren't putting up with it. Well, they didn't. They didn't trade. They signed him, right? Right. Free right. Agency. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Spent a lot of money on a guy who's already well past the peak of his career. Right. The only like I said this before, we won't go on a huge thing about this, but I, yes. the only good thing I see coming out of LeBron going to LA is possibly bringing other superstars in because he's done and he doesn't have it in him anymore to win a championship by himself. No, he's not at that point in his career anymore, and uh, I I just I think it was a waste of money. I think it was a total waste of money on the Lakers' part. The money they spent, yeah. 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 People say paying Kobe those last two years for $48 yeah. million was a waste of money. It was. But at least he gave us something. Because I think it's the same team. It's it's the same team except it's LeBron instead of Kobe. Yeah. Yeah. Except I, Kobe makes his free throws. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, still, I'm still happy with the signing, honestly. Like, I feel like, you know, for years we were like, Dwight Howard, please come back, and then Mello have a meeting <laughs> with us and all this shit, and then we actually signed. Never wanted Mello. Yeah, oh. well, you know what I mean. Like, yeah. we, nobody would even sit down with us. Now? Durant <laughs> wouldn't sit down with us. Nobody sat down with us, and then we got probably at least one of the top three players in the league in LeBron James, like to sign with us actually. So mm-hmm. overpaid. Like, well, you know, I, it, I, I agree with that. He's only yeah. here because he wants me in the movies. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Right. Like, I kind of feel like he used to be. Julian Rand Julius Randall. I almost forgot his name already. Good Lord. <laughs> you know, and Julia who? Yeah, but it's like now it's like, yeah, you know, I feel like he's more like he, his 
par game is like Julius Randle's like monster game. You know what I mean? Where it's like 25, 8, and 8. Mm -hmm. Like that's what he's going to give you on a nightly basis. Where Randle, when he gave us that, it's like, who needs LeBron? But then you go back to like 5, 3, and 2 <laughs> like yeah. the next night. I just I just think it's a waste. And I, I hope that we get some other younger stars out of it. But Yeah, I hope so. That'd be the only, mm -hmm. the only yeah. benefit I see. Uh, all right, enough about that. Yeah, <laughs> sorry everybody. Yeah, uh, football. All you non-Laker fans, we're sorry. Yeah, <laughs> Andy Dalton out for the rest of the season with Ouch. a thumb injury. Oh, little thumb. <laughs> yeah, bad he, Andy. Bad Andy. It didn't matter. He started playing bad already. Like I had already given up on him. Yeah, like I had him on my fantasy team one time. Like I think probably week three, and like he had a bad game. I'm like, I'm done with you. Yeah, <laughs> what was that thinking? Here. I see this happening again. Ginger. <laughs> Uh, the Jaguars running back Leonard uh, Fournette was suspended one game for his fight with Shaq Lawson. I will not understand ever why these stupid football players go up to other football players with helmets on and start punching them. Yeah, is that the like the brawl that they had with the was it Jacksonville? Yeah, yeah, yeah they did. Oh my god, the, yeah, uh, I saw that. Holy shit! Yeah. Why are you punching people with helmets on? Yeah. Take him off. At least take the, like get him to take his helmet off and then punch him in the face or something. Right. You're going to break a hand and beyond being suspended, you're going to be out with a broken hand. <laughs> Bunch of yeah. idiots. You deserve it, to be it, suspended. It goes back to probably 30 years ago when the best things that John Madden ever said. He goes, when there's a fight, you always tell the rookies and the veterans because the rookies always take their helmets off. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Yeah. The rookies keep punching people with helmets on. <laughs> oh, my God. Jeez. Um, and I had to talk about this because- Raider fan in the room. Uh oh. No. Derek Carr has a new uh, stat where he joins his brother. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. I was thinking it's a matter of time before that happens. <laughs> yeah. uh, Matt, is it Judden or Juden, sacked Derek Carr on three straight offensive plays. Wow. He's the second player since 1982 when the NFL started tracking player sacks with a sack on three straight uh, offensive plays. Wow. The first. Was Brad Scioli versus David Carr? Oh man! man. And the Texans in 2002. Texans. Oh man! That poor Carr family, dude, just getting man, sacked. Those cars. Yeah, yeah those he's about had it. I think he's like two more years from like being a broadcaster too now. <laughs> <laughs> Growing out that nice hair, <laughs> Derek Carr's got some nice hair. Does he? I gotta say, I haven't seen it. Oh my god, it's oh. lovely. It's Tom Brady esque. It's probably better than that. Whoa! It's almost. Yeah. I don't know. It look, he looks almost like like wrestler. Like, Ooh, oh, like wow. hair, like brother, yeah, something like. Well, no, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Not the horseshoe style haircut. <laughs> oh God, I don't know. Tom Brady's pretty. He so is pretty. Yeah, he is a pretty guy. Oh yeah, pretty man. Yeah. All right. I got. He looks look like up. he's got like pixie dust in his hair. This oh, guy's got like look the, up some like, pictures. The handsome, like slick back, like me. No, I'm just kidding. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you have the beard too. <laughs> no, he does. <laughs> you still got the one up on him. Though. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear! All right, uh, we have an integrant. Wow, integrant drunk story from oh. uh, Oktoberfest, like I said, and uh, some beer science. So let's prep the beer science while we listen to a new drunk story. All right, this is a first-time drunk story from a guy who shall remain nameless. But there was a time when this guy was at UC Santa Barbara and he was at a fraternity drinking moss beers and there was a drinking game called Cobra Commander which involved the use of a movie in a drinking game and that movie was called Animal House and the rules of said game were this you had to drink whenever anyone said a Greek letter you had to drink whenever anyone saw a Greek letter. You had to drink whenever anyone said flounder. And you had to drink whenever anyone saw female nudity. The rules of said game involved each participant having two 40-ounce bottles of alcoholic beverage under the name of King Cobra in their hands before the game started. And every time one of said events would happen, that person would have to drink one sip for each event. Needless to say, said participant, who shall remain nameless, drank his two 40-ounce bottles of Cobra Commander and finished them at the 46-minute mark in the movie and then proceeded to uh, walk home... Sans clothes, under a blanket, 
to his dormitory, and uh, there are other details that I cannot share because of potential litigation, but it was a very good night, and uh, good night, everybody. Sounds like a lawyer talking or something. Yeah, I I like how you didn't want to tell the rest of the story, but it was just some dude. Yeah, (laughs) apparently. Yeah, it wasn't him. Right, of course not. (laughs) No. (laughs) Wink, 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 wink. (laughs) Yeah. Somebody I know. Yeah, Yeah. walking home sans clothes. Oh, man. (laughs) For those of you who don't speak Spanish, that means without. Without clothes, yeah. And those rules, if you've ever seen Animal House, you're pretty much drinking the entire time. I mean, (laughs) might not not even put any rules in it. Just drink. Yeah. At that point. Yeah, just keep drinking. Yep. All right, we got some beer science to conduct. Let's all get our white lab coats on and get right into this. All right. Here we go. From a bottle, from a can, why don't people understand my inebriation? Bottles, aluminum cans, hops and malts, and magic in my hand. We're drinking beer science. Beers we've never had before. Open and we pour, and time to drink beer science. Time to drink. All right, so we have two beers in front of us. In fact, I'll give you a little hint. Two luponic distortions Ooh. of varying numbers. Which will remain nameless. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they are sans clothes. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sans clothes. So I don't want to give my opinion first. So you guys start drinking. There's okay. an A and a B because I know which is which. So I feel like I I could potentially skew the outcome. So feel free to drink your A and then skew drink your you. beer. Smell it, sniff it, drink it, love it, become one with it. Take notes, whatever you got to do. <laughs> that was a bit much. Sorry. <laughs> I will sit over here, uh, sans clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Nobody wants to hear or see that. Sans clothes. Sans clothes. Keep your sans heard, clothes. Yeah. I haven't heard sans in a long time. Right? That's a good one. Except for maybe comic sans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. Other than that, who says sans anymore? All right, what are you guys thinking? Do you have a good handle on uh, both tastes? Feel free to revisit. I, I guess. Do we have any favorites yet? Any uh, front runners? Initially, they are, are like the same. Right. Okay. That's why I'm having a. I was well, like, am I like drunk or something? Or? <laughs> well, as okay. we know, Luponic Distortion. You have to ask that. Same base beer. Uh, it's difference in hops from each series. I'll tell you a little bit about them. They're both 5.9%, 59 IBUs. Um, one of them. Uh oh. Your face looked like you disliked it. No, I'm just it. like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's like the same. I'm, I'm thinking maybe this is a trick. Yeah. Uh, and I want to cheat I'm, off your I'm, paper right now, but right? I can't see it. <laughs> no yeah, no I'm, trick. It's two I'm, different uh, two different Yeah, I'm not tasting a difference at this time. Really? There is a difference. Okay. okay. My, I cannot articulate what the difference is. <laughs> That's Get a this big man word. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Let me ask you this. Do you have a favorite between the two? Probably A. Interesting. Yeah. B, I don't know. After ch- tasting A, like B seems like it's a little like, I don't know, like um, like it's not as bold or there's not enough flavor in it. Mm-hmm. That's a fair uh, summary of it. Okay. Scott, do you have a favorite between the two? I mean, think maybe if I flip-flopped it, A would have came on a little strong, but I actually kind of like it. It's not too, too bad. Um. He's he's thinking. I think there's smoke coming out of his Slightly ears. Slightly A, but again, I'm okay. not really tasting a lot of difference. I'll, I'll tell you my favorite between the two is A, but for me, by a long shot. Uh, I'll tell you what we're drinking. So both of the Pontic Distortion, A is number 10, 5.9%, like I said, 59 IBUs. Has a four on Beer Advocate, 3.8 on Untapped. Uh, the lead hops include varieties from the Pacific Northwest and two from the Southern Hemisphere, providing distinct qualities of mango, creamsicle, peach ring, and ruby grapefruit. Ah. And then B, same stats, uh, 3.82 on Beer Advocate, 3.77 on tap. That's number 11, the newest one to come out. Uh, lead hops at number 11 include um, hops from three different continents, providing distinct qualities of pineapple, guava, and lemon drop. Mm. Oh. And I'll tell you that I'm not a big fan of pineapple in Neither my beer. It, it gives me PTSD flashbacks of pineapple sculpin. <laughs> And 
I am not a fan of lemon dry. I don't really like lemon in general. Yeah. Um, That's what it is. Yeah. I Even before reading these description, I tried these the other day, and uh, A was the winner for me. I, I'm not a huge peach fan, but it, I like that it's a little bit smoother. I find it a little bit smoother. Yes. It, it does have a little bit bolder fit, flavor, and B to me is a little more bitter, um, but not in a good way. <laughs> Correct. It's almost like even a little like um, I understand like it's not too too much of the flavor to the point where I could obviously taste it because I couldn't. <laughs> but um, I feel like it's even just a little tart. Maybe was the word I was looking for. A yeah, little that, bit. that could come from that like lemon drop. Quality. I think so. So yeah, B is uh, even the pineapple too. Like you said, isn't it's kind of more of a tart flavor where peach, yeah. like you said, is, is a little more smoother for a fruit. Yeah, it was funny when I first had ten when it first came out. I was like, I'm not a huge fan. It's real peachy. I'm not a big peach fan. Having it back to back with eleven, I was like, "Man, ten's fucking awesome." <laughs> <laughs> I do not like eleven. That pineapple and lemon is yeah, it's not for it. me. It might be my least favorite Luponic of the series. I, think, I don't know. Maybe maybe if I could just have it solo, it wouldn't be too 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 bad. But I don't know. Like especially after yeah. you have that one, it's kind of like, well, I'm just gonna stick with this. <laughs> yeah, might yeah. as well at this point. Yeah, I'm so, gonna have the peach one. Yeah. So it sounds like a, aka number ten, is definitely our winner. Yeah, and uh, we'll stick with that one. Yeah. You guys, let us know. Do you have a favorite between 10 and 11? Uh, the Unfiltered Gem and gmail.com or call us. Yeah. Tell us. 805 538 beer 2337. I forgot to mention if you have drunk stories, call us. Oh, you yeah. Have voicemail with your drunk story. Do that. And you have homework, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Especially if your drunk stories are sans clothes. <laughs> sans clothes. Sans clothes. <laughs> like the sans clothes story. should stories. be the burp word of the day. It should be. Maybe <laughs> that's what clothes. we do next week. Sans clothes. <laughs> I should take it now. I'm going to write that down. Sans <laughs> Close. I don't even know how to spell that. Uh, all right, let's move on to some booze news. Extra, extra, drink all about it. It's time for booze news. A few weeks back, we talked about San Diego and how much money they've produced, the breweries have produced for yes. the local economy and way ahead of and beyond of the, the Padres because it's, you know. The Padres. <laughs> uh, they put a amount that they've produced in 2017... San Diego Craft Brewers produce more than 1.1 million barrels of beer. Wow. Sounds like a lot of beer. Here's the insane thing that they did not talk about in the article. Uh, to be qualified as craft beer, one brewery must make, un- one of the qualifications, under 6 million barrels of beer. Oh, yeah. So technically, all the craft breweries in San Diego could become one brewery <laughs> and they'd still be craft at 1.1 barrels a year. Isn't that crazy? That's a shit ton of Ooh. beer. I think it was wow. Derek from uh, 818 had uh-huh. a problem with that. He's like, six million. Yeah, that's right. Like, yeah, he was, yeah. like, flipped his <laughs> lid on that one, man. How the hell are we supposed to do that? That's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's like uh, some Sam Adams numbers right there. Right. Because I think even New Belgium isn't hitting that kind of quantity. They're like in the one or two million, I well, think. Well, that's insane. Like, I kind of feel like, okay, that keeps them craft technically. But right. I, don't, I mean, come on. Well, and take Stone out of the equation, who I think in 2017 made like 400,000. Mm-hmm. They were making like 700,000 barrels of beer God. amongst every San Diego craft brewery minus Stone. Like, you think, like, oh, so much beer coming out of San Diego. Like, in the scheme of, like, what Budweiser's doing, <laughs> that's a drop in the fucking bucket. No kidding. Yeah, it's kind of depressing. God, even just hearing that number, did you say it was Stone 400,000? Yeah, around 400. I forget so, the exact number. I would have thought if anyone was pushing six, you know, the button, you know, the, right. the, the, the limit it would be Stone. You would think so, especially in the San Diego area. Yeah, that's so, crazy. Yeah, it's some big, some big numbers, some big shoes to fill. I'm not even close. <laughs> oh, my God. Scott's got to do his part. <laughs> oh, I'm on my way. Yeah, start drinking more San Diego yes. beer. Come on. Uh, what else? 21st Amendment from NorCal, our friends up north, uh, has expanded distribution to Colorado. So uh, congratulations, Colorado. Oh, there you go. Mm-hmm. Right on. Canarchy, which is the uh, parent company of Oscar Blues, who owns Three Weavers and Cigar City and a bunch of other tasty, tasty beers, uh, has opened a craft brewery collective called the Canarchy, Canarchy Collaboratory. Oh. God, that's hard to say. <laughs> yeah. It's uh it's in Asheville and they're going to do like small batch brews from their different breweries that they have in their portfolio and then have like all them on tap. So it's like a one-stop shop to go get Canarchy products. So think of it as like you go to one place get Coke products and you get like Coke and Sprite and whatever else Coke <laughs> oh, okay. owns. Well, Canarchy's putting out all these tasty beers. One stop shop for all these tasty beers on draft, Ooh. plus some experimental shit as well. Oh wow! So that be that could be kind of kind of cool. A field trip. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're going to Asheville, everybody. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Sierra Nevada 
raises campfire funds with their resilient Butte County IPA. And I think I read somewhere that it's now just California wildfire funds. But uh, they announced that they will brew Resilience Butte County Proud IPA to raise funds for those impacted by the campfire. Sierra Nevada will donate 100% of sales to campfire relief and is asking every other brewery in the country to brew the beer and do the same. They're actually offering ingredients to breweries oh, that wow. they can get that they can easily get ingredients. I mean, I don't think they're going to like drive to Virginia and give them a bunch. Of, like, isn't there a Sierra Nevada, Sierra Nevada out there? Maybe Virginia was a bad example, but uh, <laughs> Nebraska. I don't. I don't know how that would work. Maybe they will, but uh, a lot of local breweries here in California jumping on Earth and Fire, who we've had on the show jumping on board. Uh, local to our area is. Um, uh, start to the P. Poseidon is jumping on board oh, with yeah. that. Yeah, a bunch of local places are jumping on board, and they're helping out with ingredients. The only catch is you have to donate the proceeds to uh, California Wildfire Funds to help out. So it's pretty badass. Yeah, that's like cool. Yeah, their Chico uh, Brewery was was evacuated during the campfire, so uh, everyone's being impacted by these goddamn oh, fires. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah, it's it's rough. Yeah, excuse me while I drink. Yes. Uh, and finally, speaking of fires, Dave Grohl, leader of my favorite band. The Foo Fighters, and all around just like rock and roll god, uh, started a barbecue company in order to feed firefighters oh. battling the L.A. wildfires. So he just showed up at one of the uh, <laughs> the fire stations, I think it was in Calabasas, with like a big-ass barbecue, and was like, going to cook you guys dinner. Dang. And he took pictures, and, and now he's going to do this whole uh, food event where he's selling tickets, and all the money's going to charity and stuff, but... Uh, He's fucking badass. That's yeah. gangster. Yeah. I love Dave Grohl. Right on. Yeah. There goes my hero. That's a good story. Deep cut right there. I like that. Yeah. So uh, maybe not beer related, but uh, who doesn't have beer when they have barbecue? No It's kidding. related. Yeah. Because yeah. it's, it's fire related. Mm-hmm. And we're on fire. Uh, all right. <laughs> That's everything for today. Let's hit some music and get out of here and go uh, sans clothes down the street. <laughs> <laughs> Sans clothes, everybody. Yeah, can you imagine that? Just watching something like that guy is sans clothes out there. <laughs> the next time I'm watching porn, I'm going to think about that. Like, <laughs> that, is, that young lady is sans clothes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Now I'm going to think of that person. When, oh, never mind. Oh, my God. <laughs> undo. Undo. Delete. <laughs> delete. Uh, delete. Thank, you, <laughs> thank you guys for listening. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. Thanks for spreading the word about the show. You can find us at The Unfiltered Gentleman. Dot com run social media at the unfiltered gentleman except for twitter at unfiltered gents you can call us and leave a voicemail 805-538-BEER call us when you're drunk leave us a drunk message or tell us a drunk story or, or something along those lines uh i think that's everything don't forget to fight to fight wow Ooh, i need a beer yeah. uh don't forget to buy the drink local t-shirts 100 percent of the profits will be going to charity for the wildfires out here and i think that's a pretty sweet shirt uh, if for some reason you can't find the millions and millions of postings that we put online, send us a message or an email, and I'll send you the link. No problem. Hope everyone out there stays hydrated. And on that note, good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>